Well, it, it's 1.30 and welcome. And, uh, you know, frankly, uh, most people probably don't know that this is Cybersecurity Month. And so it's appropriate to be discussing the topic of identity theft uh, this month. And Dave and I have had a bill on this for a while. Um, you might remember the target breach, and we discovered that there was a need to help the people recover that were susceptible to uh, identity theft. And at the same time, we had real ID, uh, body cam, and the license plate reader, so the uh, you know, personal information and some of the other stuff was churning. We also uh, talked with the revisers, and they said there were several states looking at this, but everybody was focused on the real ID because if you're going to have an ID passport or some document and process, you need to have biometrics, and it would tie into or piggyback off of what's being utilized for real ID. So, you know, welcome to the uh, discussion, and hopefully we can bring forth uh, the parties from all, all the viewpoints and come up with a res resolution for Minnesota. But think about, have you ever, you know, what would happen if you walked into your house and the door was jimmied, a, a window was broken, and things, items were stolen? You know, that's a violation, but you'd know right away. The worst thing about identity theft is that days, weeks, and months could go by and there have been some cases of years before you realize somebody stole your ID and has been siphoning money off, uh, opening charge accounts, et cetera. And it's, it's a shock. It isn't, you know, you drive through your neighborhood and you can see if somebody's had been broken into. But you don't know how many neighbors may have suffered ID theft or are exposed. I mentioned the target breach. Recently we had Equifax with what, about 150 million people had their data taken. That kind of exposure is almost one per household homeowner in the United States. There's a little less known about the Minnesota, we've had some state databases breached. The feds, the GAO have had employee data stuff breached. And it's, if you're broken into and somebody steals something from your car or your home, you, know, you clean up, you take care of it. The problem with identity theft is it can take months and years for a person to recover. How many of you have misplaced or lost your wallet? And that shock and the fear that you have when, oh my goodness, my, my credit cards, my driver's license, all this stuff is gone. Now take that shock and fear, multiply it times 10, and stretch it over months. And that's what these people, the victims' ID theft, are going through. And that's why Minnesota needs to lead in helping these victims. They're drowning in this, the effects, and we need to reach out with a hand and pull them out. And this bill is meant to start the process and the discussion of letting people know, hey, we've got something that will help in helping them rebuild their lives. Now, it's not just the electronic. About a week ago, I, I live in Byron, 5,000 people. They caught someone stealing mail from the mailboxes. He had hundreds of pieces of mail in his house. And I know from talking with neighbors that it's been going on, theft from the mailboxes, for, for weeks, if not months, this summer. So it's not just the internet. There's old-fashioned ways that's happened. And we just need to let law enforcement, their approaches to try and protect, but we need to start thinking about the victims and how we can assist. Now that we've gone through the real ID, we have the capability with the DPS building to do a biometric ID theft passport. And I'm not going to define it. We need to bring the people together. And maybe it's something like a driver's license with an emblem on it, but it has some biometrics so that if you go to a bank, you can 
scan the barcode, your face will come up. Some way you can say, hey, it's me. And these criminals don't just steal your ID and theft. They often commit crimes as you. So we need to be able to have law enforcement have a process to where they're flagged that, you know, this is an ID that's been stolen. So they come and have a conversation instead of perp walk you out your neighborhood and you're already suffering the repercussions of, of ID theft. There are a lot of facets to this. It's not going to be quick and easy, but it's going to be done right, and we need to start it now. We've got all the building blocks to be able to do that. It'll be split between probably commerce and DPS, because DPS has the experience with the real ID to be able to do the documentation and the process. Commerce, because a lot of this is financial, and business transactions, so that that way um, we have everybody in sync. And uh, Judiciary Committee is probably going to hear it, and I'm sure that the uh, um, people that are concerned about your private data are also going to uh, be involved. But the really nice thing about having had the body cam, license plate reader, and real ID work through is we've had some of those battles. And now we can, instead of fighting over some of the minutia, we can look at how can we come together for solutions. Last week, I lost this, and we all do it. I could only hope the dog ate it, but uh, he didn't, and I found it. So, so all is well. But you know, you go through this, uh, you know, you go through this 10, 15 minutes of just uh, hellacious thoughts, what am I going to do? I haven't taken pictures on my credit cards or, or whatever else, and like, who am I? And okay, I've got a passport, I'm okay. So you, but, but then you think about what you're going to do. But for, for those people that are caught in this uh, kind of a dilemma, uh, and, and some are, I mean, it's, I don't know that it's, it's necessarily a, a, a huge problem yet, but uh, certainly in this world of uh, cyber world and, that we live in, th this, this kind of thing happens, and it, uh, we read about it, we see it on 60 Minutes and so on and so forth. And it can devastate somebody. And so this is a simple bill, really, in my view. It, it's simply, you know, create this uh, identity theft passport, and that passport's going to be uh, useful for an individual to, if you will, begin to reclaim at least their status. Their life is probably uh, going to take a little longer, but at least their status as a, an individual and a citizen and help them with credit cards, or creditors, rather, help them with, with law enforcement and other things, which... Uh, uh, may become necessary as you're needing to prove who you are. So relatively speaking, I think it's a simple bill. Uh, it may not necessarily solve every problem, but I think we need to maybe step up. And I think the more discussion we get into this bill, I think the more good ideas will flow in terms of this subject, in terms of its ov overall entirety. Minnesota is a, a leader in many things. If you look at Alaska has a reinsurance program now that is sort of modeled after our, our uh, uh, reinsure, you know, we had a high risk pool in Minnesota. And so other states copied things that we've done. It, if we are a leader in taking care of it, we've got many headquartered, you know, Fortune 500 corporations in Minnesota, it will be noticed and hopefully will help expedite federally and in other states activity. But if you know, frankly, sitting back, I, I think is, I would feel uh, that I wasn't doing due diligence if I sat back and didn't try to start moving this ball forward. And frankly, I think with nationally the real ID rolling out, I think the processes nationwide are going to be there so that it could become federal uh, and at least other states would, uh, would look at it. And the excuse of, oh, we'll just wait for the feds to do it, uh, I think a lot of us are seeing the pain caused by waiting for the feds to do other things. You know, the legislature, I think, moves at the, at the, at the speed, if you will, of the, of the public. Uh, I, I think uh, as facts like this come known and are affirmed, well, I, I think we'll move on it. I'm not, I'm not terribly, we're going to take care of the people in Minnesota and, and, their, and their data. There's, there's no question. I mean, that's, that's almost sacred. I mean, a state that would let their data get loose, if you will without due diligence is, uh, is, uh, is a state that's not doing their job. And so 
as we go into the next session, let's let's hear the case and uh, let's make some decisions. But uh, I, you know, I, I'll just say it. All, all, all this hindsight, all this criticism, doesn't get us anywhere. You know, the governor just ought to just basically said, you know, look, we got a problem here. Maybe let's go into the next session and solve it. That would be much more of a healthy kind of approach. This 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 backwards, if you will, criticism constantly. This issue and other issues. It's not helpful for the legislature and the governor's relationship. So uh, let's just do, I think, as Majority Leader Gazelka has tried to do all session, and let's, let's look forward and let's work through these problems that we don't need to constantly be criticizing each other on, on the progress we're making. So you'd be open for more money for cybersecurity? Sure. Or yeah, I mean, make the case, and sure. I mean, there's not a one of us that would disagree that, uh, or, or not agree, the fact that we ought to take care of our data. Uh, that is precious data. <laughs> to, to get in mind that data, you can obviously do a lot with it, and uh, more than I could probably even imagine. But uh, not unlike the data that uh, resides at the place I used to work, that is absolutely sacred. You put up firewalls just as thick as you can put them up to, to, to preserve that and, and keep it private. So we'll do what we need to do.